and uh, consider uh, possibly uh, being a part of the content here or just enjoying the, the events. Uh, so, yeah. So, without any further ado, uh, uh, does anybody have any questions? Yes. Don't, aren't, aren't you taking the existence of the United States for granted? <laughs> <laughs> I may well be. I've never been there. <laughs> yeah. so how do you know it's there? Well, I, I'm not really convinced that it exists. Yeah. What's wrong with my point? <laughs> you don't. Um, well, I know. I know places exist. Yeah, for right. Places exist. We think it's a place, all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, in my mind, it's a two words that I associate with a geographical landmass across a, mm -hmm. an ocean. I can look out to the horizon mm -hmm. and I can look to the solid ground below me. Mm -hmm. So I am inferring uh, the induction and inductively that mm. yes, there is a place that I've labeled called the United States. Mm. <laughs> what am I missing? Well, I, I don't, I don't know. The, the, the people in what calls is called referred to as the United States tend to um, rubbish. Um, dialectical thought and they, they they want to say that contradictions don't exist and yet on every dollar it says ex pluribus unum so so it, it doesn't exist out of it comes one it's a process it, it can't be just a place it must be a process and if it's a process it's existence is a, is a more Actually, a more difficult one to kind of pin down out of it. It only exists when it does things that it considers to be um, United Statish, so to speak. Yeah? When it does, does other things, it's um, abnegating itself. And one could possibly say that it's doing quite a good job of that at the moment, actually. So, in a certain sense, it is coming out. We, one is emerging, not necessarily one that we want to say, yes, that, yes that's great. It's not, a, it's not a, an achievement that we want to celebrate necessarily. Um, but it's, uh, one could maybe say that it should be doing other things instead. I mean, this education thing, it shouldn't do that too eagerly, for example. Um, so, I mean, so. I managed to, to argue the argument, the thing round to begin to celebrate your point. <laughs> so what are we saying? That's my contribution. Yes, I, I heard. <laughs> what are we saying? Well, uh, tonight, uh, we're definitely looking forward to what you're saying about uh, uh, mutual recognition. Right. So. Okay, well, I, 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 um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I, I hope I don't bore people silly because um, the, the, I, I wrote this down rather quickly a while ago and then I looked at it again today in particular and I thought, well, it, 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 it's, it, to make sense of it, one has to try to work one's way through it. And I don't really like presentations that work their way through things. I, I spent some, dare I say, it, decades teaching in the university and I had to go to an awful lot of, of seminars. And at the beginning of, of like, where 
someone was presenting a paper and they would put their bit of paper down on the table and very often they would look around the audience and there were people sitting there, and, oh God, there are people I'm meant to be ad addressing. And academics are not usually really very happy talking to, to, to other people. It's really quite bizarre. You'd have thought there would really be people who like talking to other people, but an awful lot of them don't like it at all. And so in a, a seminar, people having put the paper on the table would say, ah, I, I'll, I'll read my paper aloud. And my, my spirits would just sink at that point because the, the um, tone of voice of somebody reading aloud gets into a kind of monochrome and it becomes intensely boring. I mean, when somebody says, I'm going to read this paper aloud, you know, and you sort of sit quietly because they're, they're going to have to, they're a bit embarrassed about having to talk to people in the first place. But then, and they, 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 they start off saying this. And, and then they, they, they sort of chortle a bit because there was a bit that's, they, they remember it was meant to be a kind of joke when they wrote it down, but it's not really funny. But <clears throat> and everybody's already lost its, the, 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 the line already. You know, what's going on? Um, so I hope that that doesn't happen to me um, t t t t tonight. Yes. Well, I haven't actually said <laughs> yet. That's for my first decision. <laughs> no, I'm not going to read it straight um, straight off. I'm going to try to to to, to uh, epitomize. That's quite a good word. It doesn't really mean anything much. I'm going to try to epitomize it. I'll tell you what I think it, it said. D different bits of it. I'll try it. Um, and, but I'll try to be a little bit more lively than the kind of deadening academics that I'm, I'm, I'm referring to in my, my, my anecdotes. Um, well, I'll read the first three words aloud. In recent years, it's, uh, and it's true, in, re in recent years, um, the, the, the term recognition and the term mutual recognition are terms that I have been using more commonly. And when I've been writing something down or arguing some point, or whatever, very often it turns out to be a point about um, recognition or mutual recognition. <clears throat> um, and that especially applies to uh, work that I've been doing and co-writing with my, my friend Adrian Wilding, who lives in Erfurt in Germany. And so we send draft papers and things to, to and fro and, and um, work together. It works really, really well. Um, <clears throat> and we've written a, a number of, of, of articles about recognition and mutual recognition. Um, and most of these articles appear on a website um, with the name, the, the website name is, is Heathwood Press. Uh, the Heathwood Press, um, which is a, a kind of critical theory, Marx, Marx is on, but critical theory kind of website. Now, it unfortunately has a, 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 a no longer exists, but it, it does, it, it exists in, in a kind of archival sort of way. If you type Eastwood Press into your computer, you'll, you'll get to it. And the things that were published on um, the, the, this, this website, including Adrian's and my papers, are, are still available on this website. So they haven't, they haven't kind of vanished, but it, it's not unfortunately publishing any new papers. It's gone into kind of, um, whatever, quiescence. Um, <clears throat> now, and so what I'd be trying to do to you, do, to, do, with you tonight is, is, is to make intelligible to you what the terms recognition and mutual recognition that Adrian and I have been using quite widely and what, what this is all about, what the terms mean, whether I get this across and, and you're all enlightened at the end. 
I don't know. I mean, it's quite possible you'll get to the end of what I have to say. Well, we'll, 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 we'll skip that one. We won't use those terms ourselves. Like in, our, in our pub conversations, mutual recognition is not going to be the topic of the day. You know? um, but So we'll see how it goes. Um, I, one thing I don't want to get into is too much um, textual um, discussions about what uh, particular writers had to say on, in what book about recognition or mutual recognition. So that said, I now have to, to, to backtrack a little bit um, because I think it's impossible to discuss the terms recognition and mutual recognition intelligently unless um, two writers in particular are brought in mind. In their writings, recognition and mutual recognition are live um, issues. That, that, and, and the, the writer's concern are the philosopher um, G.W.F. Hegel, um, Georg Wilhelm and Friedrich Hegel, yeah, who uh, died in 1831 and um, lived and, and taught um, in, uh, in Germany. Um, and the other writer is uh, Karl Marx. Now, Karl Marx doesn't have so much to say about recognition, but I think that in his writings, the notion of, of, of mutual recognition does play an important part in the argument that he, um, that he puts forward. Um, and of course, to what extent Marx can be construed as a writer on recognition is a controversial um, issue amongst um, commentators. But I don't, I don't want to try to get too much into the minutiae of, um, of, of, of commentary interpretation of particular passages. I can't skip that altogether because Hegel and Marx are so central to um, things I, I, I do want to say. So I'm apologizing in advance, right? but um, there we are. Um, Marx himself uh, wrote from well, he lived between 1813 and 1883. Um, and it is widely said that Hegel was uh, with Marx's teacher, that he influenced Marx's thinking very considerably. And he wasn't, Hegel was not literally his teacher. I mean, Hegel never sat in a, a lecture room. <clears throat> Sorry, Marx never sat in a lecture room with Hegel teaching him as such. But he, um, early in his life, uh, read a lot of, of, of Hegel, perhaps all of Hegel, but he was very familiar with Hegel's, Hegel's work. Um, no, I can't see, it. I'm a bit stodgy in here. And I'm not sure if I had glasses, that would be the Uh, it's like life, life on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, so that's true. Oh, it's all right. I can see perfectly well, actually. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'll, I'll start. Oh, I won't talk first of all about Hegel because usually nobody has, has heard of Hegel, or if they have heard of Hegel, they probably haven't read very much of Hegel. Um, Karl Marx is a more oh right thank you very much there it's amazing um, Karl Marx is a more um, is a writer who you will be more familiar with I'm going to, to presume that everybody has got own down knowledge of either um, Marx or Hegel but oh. so I realise I pointed that right in people's eyes so I'll I'll, I'll do this. You're not going to sit there all the time. I talk my way through my chair. Do you want to put it on a chair? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, that's an excellent idea, isn't it? Yes, right. Thank you, Rep. Oh, we have the technology. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the genius, indeed. Yes, yes, yes. That's wonderful. Right. Um, right. Um, I'll start off talking about Marx because he's, he's more, more familiar of the two. Um, he, uh, Marx uh, wants to construct or to achieve an emancipated society. Now, so what kind of society does he regard as emancipated? Well, the answer to that, the obvious answer that will be familiar to you in any case, is the idea that he wants to um, achieve a communist society. Um, now, so much is, is, is widely known of, of Marx, um, but if you push that process of interpretation a little bit further, then we get into complicated area. Um, what, all right, Marx wants to live in a communist society. What does he understand by a communist society? What kind of society counts as a communist society? Um, and if you ask that question, then the, the, the connections between Marx and his teacher Hegel become, I think, apparent. Because what Marx, this is me moving beyond what he says in particular texts, but what I think is the case, and what my friend Adrian would agree is the case, is that for Marx, um, the communist society <clears throat> is a society where mutual recognition um, exists. I'll come back to the phrase mutual recognition in, in a moment. Um, and there's one particular passage I'd like to um, read out from Marx. It's a passage in, the, 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 um, in his famous book, The Communist Manifesto. And the passage is, is in fact, the, 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 the cluster of words which um, ends with part, ends part two uh, of the Communist Manifesto. And there, um, Marx says uh, that in a, a communist society, we shall have an association in which he says, the free development of each, each individual, um, and e free development of each is the condition for the free development of all. Um, and I think that a society where there is the free, where the free development of each is the condition of the free development of all um, is what Hegel would have described as a mutually recognitive um, society. Passage is important because it indicates how in general terms, Marx sees emancipation. The passage is important um, because it shows what um, Marx derives from Hegel. Uh, basically, there's the same conception of what an emancipated society is, um, a society where uh, mutual recognition uh, obtained. I come on to what he means by mutual recognition in just a moment, <clears throat> but they, they the basic thing that I think Marx wants to say is that the, the chief obstacle to um, a mutually recognitive society is um, lies in the, the um, lies in private property and indeed public property as well. The notion of property is the problem, yeah? And, that, and, and Marx spends decades of his life trying to anatomize the notion of property, what does, what does property mean and um, what form does property 
take and 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 in, in, in most recent centuries, um, the, 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 the form of property is, is capitalist private property, according to, to, to Marx. So Marx writes about property not because he thinks that property is especially important or especially admirable, but he talks about property so much because that's the chief obstacle to the kind of emancipated society that he wants to, to bring about. Okay, so um, under the subtitle of his <clears throat> main book, um, Capital, and the subtitle of Capital, Volume 1, is, is a, 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 a critique of political economy. So it's a critique of um, a theory that takes private property, private property, capitalist private property uh, for uh, as its basis. So Marx wants to take us beyond the, 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 the limitation that, that property and private property um, in, involves. And that's all I'm really going to say about the relation between um, Marx and, and and Hegel uh, this evening, you will no doubt be delighted to, to, to know. Um, back to Hegel then, very, very briefly, even more briefly. Um, the book by Hegel, which uh, Adrian and myself um, set most store by and we find most rewarding um, is a book that he, he, he calls The Phenomenology of Spirit. Um, it's a work which Hegel published in um, 1806. And <clears throat> I, I mention this book here because um, and also give it its date, because Hegel's writings changed significantly over time. Um, I think it would be, if I'm going to put this very schematically, it, 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 this um, is to be true to say, roughly speaking, that there, there's an early or earlier Hegel, um, and the phenomenology of spirit um, is an example of the, this earlier Hegel. And then there's a later Hegel, an example of the later Hegel being his um, Philosophy of Right, a book called The Philosophy of Right, which he published in 1821. Um, and what's going on in Hegel's life, really, is that when he was a young man, the, he was a student, um, the, the, the uh, French Revolution took place, and Hegel was um, a passionate adherent of, of the, the, the French Revolution. And in his earlier writings, um, ideas deriving from or linked to the French Revolution were very important. Um, in his later writings, he becomes more, <clears throat> sorry, more conservative um, with a, a small c. He, he, he continues to be a, a uh, what some commentators describe a, a, a liberal reformer. He doesn't become an out and out, if you like, reactionary or, or kind of defender of the, of, of, of old things just for their own sake. Um, but the, the kind of revolutionary Elan, you know, evaporates in his, his work and he's a more cautious and, and more, um, Yeah, well, dare I say, a more bureaucratic right, kind, kind of kind of kind of writing. Um, now, the other thing I wrote down, which is undeniably true, is that Hegel's phenomenology, phenomenology of spirit, um, is a lengthy book, a lengthy and notoriously a very difficult book. I mean, it's, it, you've got different editions of it, run different numbers of length, but different numbers of pages, but. 
one edition goes on to page 808 or something like, like that. Um, <clears throat> and I'm certainly not um, going to try to unpack the, 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 the ins and outs of Hegel's phenomenology um, to, to, tonight. Um, <coughs> When I was teaching at Edinburgh University, I, I spent a, a year reading the, the Hegel phenomenology with the students. And it, it took us really the, the full academic year to work our way through the, 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 the book. And I, I think most people found that was really quite a considerable experience, just being exposed to a text in that detail and, and arguing our way through what it, the implication of the various things was. Um, now, how much of this am I going to read to allow this? Yeah, I think um, what I want to, to mention is that in, in the phenomenology, um, chapter four of the phenomenology, the theme of recognition comes into play and, and Hegel describes recognition. A, a short passage on recognition is an immensely difficult passage, I have to explain it. It's a very concentrated passage, uh, but um, nonetheless there is a passage there that, that he, where he, he, he gives an, his account of, of, of recognition. And um, he gives an account of what he calls recognition in its pure form. Now, recognition in its pure form, according to Hegel, is um, mutually mutual recognition. And mutual recognition, again, I can just sketch the, 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 the um, The idea, I think the best thing to think about in the mutual recognition is the idea of, think, think simply of, of a, 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 a conversation. Now, at the moment, we're not really having a conversation. You are very being polite and listening to what I have to say. But then when at some point a discussion might break out and the, a, a, a to and fro of, 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 of argumentation may take place. And it's this to and fro pattern of um, uh, of, of in, this to and fro pattern of interaction, which is the key thing to um, the idea of mutual recognition. And um, in the, this, this difficult passage in, in the, the phenomenology that I've, I've mentioned, where Hegel writes about um, uh, <coughs> um, pure recognition, or <coughs> I'm sorry pure recognition or, or mutual recognition. He says that, that, that mutual recognition is, um, is reciprocal. And that, that it's, it, it's reciprocal in the sense that it, it's, it's two-sided. That, 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 that interaction takes place between us. If, if we recognize each other, or to use another term, if we acknowledge each other, um, in, and, and if there's mutual recognition between each other, there is an interaction, a to and fro dynamic um, b b between us. And the notion of conversation is worth holding on to at that point. Um, because it, it's sometimes said about conversations that a good conversation is one which follows its subject matter where it will, where it go, where it happens to go, depending on how they, they, they argument. Um, about it um, 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 unfolds. And it's the same thing with um, the, 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 the interactive, reciprocal interaction that is, is mutual recognition for, for, for Hegel. Um, that, that if recognition is, if, if, mutual, re if mutual recognition um, is guided by something outside of recognition, let's say a, a social institution like the state, or a corporation or, or whatever it might, a church, whatever it might be. Um, and if people start behaving, not, not because of the, the interaction itself, 
<clears throat> but because the, it, it, people um, feel that certain things should be said, you know, um, out of, let us say, politeness or political conformism or whatever it might be, um, then recognition ceases to be pure. It becomes alienated or contradicted or contradictory. You could use these terms in, interchangeably, I think. Um, it ceases to be recognition as such. If it follows, if it stays recognition, then, then, then the, 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 the interactive to and fro uh, movement um, continues and, and is kept afoot um, in the, the discussion that takes place. I, mean, I think the notion of mutual recognition and discussion yeah, are, are very closely aligned um, ideas. Um, if, if people start relating to each other, not out of the dynamic of interaction itself, um, then relations between people become alienated and ossified and, and impoverished and, and they start behaving like indeed robots or, or like, uh, the, 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 like people who are just trying to be polite to each other or, or for that matter, who they, they start behaving like people who try, are trying to manipulate each other rather than find out what each other has to say and about, about the thing. And uh, in um, what, what the, the, the Hegel's phenomenology of spirit has quite a lot to say about the course of history. He's thinking of European history. Um, and in the view of history that he unpacks, he thinks of history as, as a sequence of um, patterns of recognition. Yeah, or patterns of an interaction, um, but and 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 the, the different patterns of interaction are are different in, in marked ways. Um, but there's one thing which is common to all the patterns of recognition that he, he thinks in in the European history, which is that that the recognition concern is um, alienated or contradictory. Um, or, or impoverished um, in one way or, or another. But it's only but in his own time of, 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 of life, of his own period of history, um, the period uh, of history marked most significantly by the French Revolution that he was so passionately um, engaged in, um, that, that out of the French Revolution arose, um, according to Hegel, the notion of indeed mutual recognition. And he thinks of the mutual recognition as, as the, 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 his own phrase is the end, well, the phrase used in his connection with his writings is the end of history. Um, <clears throat> history is, is a, 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 a sequence of contradictory patterns of recognition. And history, in his terminology, ends when mutual recognition comes into, into being. And an important point with, about that is that for Hegel, where there is mutual recognition, and not only that uncontradicted freedom comes into existence, but that uh, 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 uncontradictory um, recognition comes into existence, uh, but that, that, that um, freedom um, comes into its own. There's a lot of stuff about freedom in, in Hegel's writings. So hence the, the, this notion of, 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 of emancipation and, and the notion of, of, of emancip an emancipated society is a society where the recognition that goes forward in that society um, is um, recognition of a, a mutual kind. Yeah? And if there's a mutual recognition, then freedom is, uh, exists and freedom is, is recognized and, uh, and, and, and is emphasized um, according to the, the phenomenology.
And my suggestion and, and, and Adrian's suggestion is that um, the, this notion of emancipation as mutual recognition and is a notion that, that you find in, in Hegel's uh, phenomenology and it's a, um, <clears throat> a notion of emancipation that is that you also find in Marx. It's, it, it's communist society is mutually recognitive in, in Hegel's sense. So that the Hegel of the, of the phenomenology and the, and the earlier Hegel and, and Marx think of Hegel, think of, of, of emancipation in the same way. There's a line of continuity, so to speak, from Hegel's writings to Marx's writings in that. Now, there's the next step in what I want to, to say is a, a step that could plunge us in, in yet further complexities. And I don't really want to get this too, into, too much into this complexity at the, 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 the moment. <coughs> um, <coughs> the notion of recognition in Hegel's phenomenology. And the notion of recognition that I think underlies Marx's line of argument as well. It's recognition um, is, um, is constitutive. Now, and and I, I suppose I shall have to try to explain what I mean by constitutive, but very briefly, something is constitutive in my meaning when something comes into being through that. Um, it, it's a good example of, of something that's constituted. There's a speech act where somebody says, for instance, I promise such and such. I mean, prior to that, nobody is obliged, nobody, before anybody says I promise, um, that, that, that the, the promise didn't exist. Yeah, but when somebody says, I promise, then they're in a different ethical situation. There are, are, different, are, are obligations upon them to, to keep the promise that they have, they have made. Yeah, so, so um, a, a constitutive action. It's a bit like a performative, what philosophy also sometimes calls a performative action. Um, and the point here, I think, in connection with with Hegel is the relation between um, recognition or mutual recognition and, and freedom. The kind of freedom that, that Hegel has in mind is self-determination. And when there is mutual recognition, that people, um, people become self-determining through the, 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 the reciprocal recognition which, which obtains, um, so that um, when there is a society where there's mutual recognition, but not just a society where people sit separately alongside one another, but that, that um, it's in and through other people and interaction with other people that their self-determination, their freedom comes into, into being. Um, it's almost if you, a really stupid example of this. Imagine that a lot of people come into a room touching torches, yeah? and then they shine torches on each other. They illumine each other. Yeah? And the, 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 the interaction, <coughs> of, the mutual interaction, um, throws into relief the freedom of, of each and every other in, individual. Hence the notion, hence the link between the notion of um, of, of, of mutual recognition and and freedom and, and self determining self determination in mind. So that when when we live in a in a society where we are all mutually recognizable, and then one each everybody else's freedom is highlighted yeah, by the recognition that, that we bring that we, we give to 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 one another and their freedom highlights our, our freedom 
as well. And um, so we're back to the, the, the bit by um, Marx that I quoted earlier on. It's a, a society for the, 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 um, the free development of each is a condition of the, the, the free development of all. You know, there's almost a word for word um, summation of what Hegel claims about uh, mutual recognition. Yeah? So the, the, that, this image of, of, uh, of a communist society that, that Marx gives in, in, in the Communist Manifesto. Now, I've taken you through quite a lot of difficult, um, complicated um, textual material. And I, I want to sort of stand back a bit from that. Uh, they, they, um, I think, I mean, if one wants to talk about a society where there is mutual recognition, um, when I was talking about a society where there is an interplay of interaction between individuals, and in and through that interplay of, of, of interaction, the, 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 the self-determining, the freedom and self-determination self of each is, is, is thrown into relief. And, and um, it's crucial to the idea of such a society. Um, that uh, the, the pattern of recognition which exists in the, the, the society concern um, is uh, that, that, the, that the free interaction of individuals is not um, suffocated out or is not made to, to um, fit into any one particular part, one particular social institution or political party, or, or religion, or, or, or anything whatsoever. And so um, the, the, the image of, of um, emancipation that is highlighted in, in Gunn and Wilding's writings, and in, in the, 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 the Heathwood um, articles and so forth, and is, is a, a, an image of, of emancipation that <coughs> Tries to, uh, it's important to move beyond any notion of, of, of alienation or alienation of, uh, or, or alienating social institutions. Um, precisely the opposite of what uh, Marx um, is sometimes held to, to be saying. You know, he, uh, Mark, Marx is telling us that we should all go and do this or do that to be communist, or whatever. Marx, if, if if our interpretation is right, we're wanting to say that, that, that um, Marx is, is, is pointing towards a kind of social existence where there, there is no um, requirement upon us that we must behave in any one particular way. We decide what we do in and through our interaction with others. And it's in and through this interaction that we become ourselves, we become the, the self-determining beings that we potentially are. And it's with those sort of concerns um, in mind uh, that, that, that uh, Gunn and Wilding have been sort of pushing their the, the, the interpretations. Um, and trying to support patterns of forms of um, political radicalism, uh, which don't tell people what they should do, um, but, but, but let, let people go and think for themselves about what they, they reckon they ought to be doing and, and, and discuss it. I mean, basically, go and have a discussion is the kind of one imperative. You know? So in a certain sense, the, 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 the ragged university, yeah? Is a, an aims at being an instance of what we consider to be an emancipatory uh, society, very much in the way that that, that, uh, that Alex has, 
suggestion. Um, and there are obviously lots and lots of, of, of ways of thinking that are, are extant in the world today where um, people want to think into themselves and look for like, like a politics of identity and say, uh, I am a such and such, what I want is my such and such, my um, identity be, be um, respected or, or whatever else. What we want to say is that, no, we want to get involved in discussion about what we might want to, to do or, or be um, and, and, and discuss in an open fashion uh, what, um, what that, that might, what, what we might, might want to be is. Um, now, I think I'll, I'll shut up at that point because we can then go on to, to discussion. And I begin to contradict myself if I start <laughs> telling you too much about what I think we should and shouldn't do. So I stop here. This is like saying thank you for me. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. I, I'm I'm pretty blown away uh, by a really elegant pathway to. <clears throat> uh, the, the anatomy of, of the ideas. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I'm not very well read on either Marx nor Hegel. I know the names because uh, they're, I, I know them as famous names. So to hear somebody talk about them, you know, and, and un, unpack a bit about your, your inter how you're reading them. Uh, it changes them from this very abstract, alien sort of classic <laughs> in the academy to something that I'm quite inclined to go away and read. Mm -hmm. I, I should ad admit that, that what you've been getting from me is, is my interpretation of, of Hegel and, and Marx. I mean, those are the interpretations I would defend, but they're, they're actually quite... Um, there are said heretical interpretations of both Hegel and, and Marx. I could, I mean, I, if you want, I could elaborate on that. And, Tell you what the more usual view of Hegel and Marx are, but I mean, I, 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 I thought that's probably pushing. I'm, I, I, I bore you to death probably by telling you my interpretation, and, and I don't want to bore you to death by telling you what other people's interpretations are, because I mean, you, you've got the view that I think in any case. So why should I be sitting and getting somebody else along to tell them about it? And there's a lot of people who. Um, favor the, 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 the orthodox interpretations. And it's amazing how academic life, which you just thought the interpretation of somebody like Hegel would be a most remote and kind of, people would say, well, you know, maybe, you know. But, but in, in, in fact, it's a, it's a viciously thought um, line of, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I can tell you, if you try to publish something that says something more like what John and Wilding have to say. It's very difficult. People don't want to know about it. <laughs> That's because you know, we are right, of course, and they are wrong. <laughs> Is it actually true that uh, when, towards the end of his life, uh, Marx, Karl Marx was asked, do you believe in Marxism? Do you still believe in Marxism? Uh, or, or what do you think of Marxism? He's, he said, all I know is that uh, I don't believe in Marxism. Or, or it's something, it's, I don't know whether it's an apocalypse. You know. yeah, the, 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 I, I am for when I'm not a Marxist or something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, I'm not aware 
of him actually having said that. I mean, I, I read one or two rather good biographies of Marx. So, I mean, I think I would have <clears throat> come across that. that. I mean, if what Marx does say at some point is that someone towards the end of his life says, I mean, why? I, I, I think your, your com completed work, your complete works should be um, published. And his response to that was, my complete works, I still have to write them. <laughs> In other words, he was kind of on, ongoing, rethinking his ideas as, as, he, as he went. Um, I think that is true. I'm quoting from David McClellan's biography of, of Marx, which is actually extremely good. Um, but I don't think the famous bit about him not being a Marxist, well, I don't think he said, he said that. He could have said it because the, 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 what was going on at the, at the end of his life was that the, the German Social Democratic Party was on the rise. And it <clears throat> was, um, had, was a, had adopted a, a kind of, if you like, simplified version of Marx's theory. And he took a dim view of what the, social, the German Social Democrats had to say. You know, so, but it, I mean, it would have fitted. I mean, if he, if he did say that, that, that doesn't uh, 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 turn over my, 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 my reading or my understanding <laughs> of him. Um, the, the, the kind of more orthodox view that, and the German social democratic point of view is it emphasizes um, property and, and ownership, a, a much more basic and fundamental thing in social existence. It's a more economistic kind of view, basically. And, and that, I think, was the, the and, and, and he, he didn't think terribly highly of those interpretations of his, his writing. But, I mean, basically, he wanted to get on and finish off writing his, his, his enormously unfinished um, oeuvre, basically. Um, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wondered um, because we've got an idea of um, mutual recognition as a process of, of communication that leads yeah. to yeah. emancipation. Yeah. And, and what I wondered is that one of the things you mentioned in the end, and you mentioned a couple of times, is that you, know, you can't can't set a limitation, can't put them in framework to say, right, well, set right, rules yeah, that's or that's set injunctions. Yeah. But how would you set up conditions to then allow mutual recognition to, I mean, how, if you couldn't influence yeah. it, how would you, how, what would you be doing? Well, to really say, I don't know. <laughs> the answer to that. What you can say, I think, what you can do, which is what Marx tried to do, which is, to, to uh, work out what are significant obstacles to mutual recognition. You know, why do we not live in a mutually equivalent society? Well, there are certain things, certain issues that, that, are, 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 that, 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 that um, are, are preventing it. That we're absorbed in these other things, so we don't focus on, 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 on mutual recognition. And I think the notion <laughs> of, of property in its various forms is the one that Marx himself was most concerned with. Um, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, one could go into this in, in all sorts of ways, but uh, I mean, the, 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 the extent to which private property or the image of private property affects our, ourselves in, in, in who and what we are. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's very, very current. I mean, even when people talk, and I'm not really talking about here about high concepts, just about the language. When people talk about my rights, for instance, yeah? my right, think about my, yeah? It's as though rights are seen as, as a strange kind of, almost metaphysical kind of property. Yeah? That's, um, and, and, you know, your rights and my rights. And, we're already beginning to parcel things out as though we're, we're property owners of one sort or another. Admittedly, that's a kind of metaphysical kind of property, right? 
but um, we're using the notion of the metaphor of right to, to think of two individuals. Um, and I think that that's the, the t one point about talking about recognition is it, is it breaks away from the, the terminology of right of right rights based uh, t terminology. Recognizing instead, what would you be recognizing instead? Um, your self determination and my self determination. What we make of ourselves through our actions and through what we say and do. I mean, looking at another way, I mean, if this is a kind of wide ranging um, conversation, and somebody, a new person, came in the door, and, and, and what, what they would contribute to the conversation would be or could be a fresh perspective. Yeah? In a certain sense, it would be their perspective. It wouldn't be theirs. I don't mean that they have you know, got a special certificate of some kind, but they, they come in and say, well, think about it this way. You know, nobody has probably thought about it in that way. Yeah, well, fair enough, let's consider it. <laughs> so, 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 so each individual is, is, is a potential new perspective on what is being, being debated and discussed. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's that, that suggests as though it gets, it can get very relativistic, as so though everybody comes in and gives a different kind of view. But actually, it's, I think, well, I think of it anyhow, more as, as a, indeed, a, a, a discussion um, that, that, I mean, like, like you, you raised the question of, of what, what is it that each that different people bring in, for instance. And I, and I hadn't really thought of that until um, I was responding to, to Something that you said, and um, so um, so I, I think it's possible to have discussions that that um, cross the boundaries of of perspectives. If you see what what I mean, I don't mean there's one absolutely true perspective either. But you, you, you're not completely at at sea. You don't just have to say, "Oh, well, right, right, that's what you have to say." I mean, sometimes people do that in in, in conversations. Of course, they say, "Well." You know, every, everybody's got their own view. A bit of a kind of a, a, a sort of hippie kind of laid back kind, kind of thing. I don't think one necessarily has to go that far, but but the discussion has to be a, a genuine discussion. It's got to involve trying to see the world from the other person's point of view and see what it say. Well, yeah, but you know, that that's, that that makes a bit of sense. But but what about this other point that I've just thought? You know. So mutual recognition is a, is a kind of open, I think, is a sort of open-ended um, process. Um, if, it, if, it, if it stops altogether, then I think that probably mutual recognition vanishes. You know, that if, if we're just sitting here and we can't think of anything else to say to or amongst our, ourselves, and that's it. I think that's when the the the, 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 the the, the ragged university meeting comes to an end. <laughs> so, right, folks, off we go. <laughs> um, I think that's looking at it as a in a pessimistic fashion. It could happen, but um, you know, most likely, what will happen is that somebody else will walk in the door and bring in a new a new perspective and say, "Well, what about this and that?" It's, oh, don't know about that. This will get the, the conversation will veer over into the notion of common sense in a minute, <laughs> but it's the same kind of idea. You you're reminding me of yeah. all this. Uh, yeah. but, so uh, Richard did a talk on common sense some time back, which resulted in, in a, a tryst of of us all sitting and trying to write about what our thoughts of common sense was, were, are, if you know. And I, I've got this laughter inside of me when I think of what I wrote, because I wrote this very technical, <laughs> quite obscure piece of work, which, which uh, my, my friend said, uh, uh, when, when I asked him, what, what do you think of that? He said, oh, well, that's all, it's, it, 
it's heavy going. <laughs> it's a sort of like leather elbow patch wearing kind of. Uh, could you not have written it in plainer terms? <laughs> like, ah, yeah, you're right, Paul. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's like, but if I try to convince the world everybody should talk about mutual recognition, that is a difficult one as well. It's got so many syllables. <laughs> mutual recognition. Mm -hmm. um, my counselling background with Darren Gordon, who wrote self actualization, and with that comes the will to hopefully enable other people to actually in a mutual fashion. Mm -hmm. And that mutual recognition yeah. is mirroring the other person, the other. In terms of when you were speaking there, you said it's complicated. I didn't find that complicated. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I told you were so good at explaining it or I recognize what I've got ready for. Well, that, 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 that's, that's great. <laughs> that, that's really good because that means, I mean, I, I, I don't think that what I've been talking about is, is, is complicated. Um, but it, 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 it does involve a specific kind of, um, I'm not quite sure what the word should be, but it, it, it involves seeing a, a picture and the way it, it comes together. If you, can, if, if you see it, it's pretty obvious, but, but if you don't see it, 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 it is incredibly complicated. And if, if, you, if the only thing that you do with, with it is you try to interpret Hegel writing about it in the phenomenology, and then, but under what conditions should I mean recognition be said as to be a reciprocal thing? What's what's he on about? Um, I mean that can be a, a difficult and complicated thing to try to decode. Maybe it's just that I mean I, I, I have a feeling it's probably for the, for Hegel the same thing as when I'm, I've got the same problem here that. that He's, he's, he's got a picture in his mind, and he, he and, and he's pushing out all these words. Yeah, that, that's um, yes, and it makes it sound more complicated than, than it is. I think once you you've got it, that, that, then then it, it all becomes uh, yeah. You know. It is not beautiful. Okay, so that's one way of saying it. But you're bringing you're bringing a Rogerian perspective. You're bringing a a whole different set of assumptions and understanding, yeah. and that could be simply placing that on your how you're describing it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But it's coming from a different. I mean, when you mentioned Rogers to me, I think about relationship. It was very much about that relationship and set of actualizations. Right. It's the relationship between yeah. the, between the therapist and the client, isn't it? To allow that to actualization. But, but it's a different uh, kind of uh, a different kind of thing than Hegel. I mean, just as another example, why not mutual understanding? Why not mutual respect? Why why mutual recognition? Recogn these two things seem to me of a much more intense something going on than recognition. Yeah. If I'm just recognizing you, I'm just going, oh right, oh yeah, I see, I see, I see where you're coming. Well, I'm, I'm understanding you, you. you. I'm respecting you. It's yeah. a it's a deep it's a deeper it's a more, much more to connect it for later. But, yes. then, but then, I mean, it, that, that's, I mean, I think you could call it three point four five six forward slash b two if you want. I don't think it really. I mean, you oh, know, no, the, the label is important. Thing. The label but, is important. But, I mean, it's, 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 if, if, if I if I announced my topic for tonight as being four point six point five whatever it was, I, I bet I wouldn't have anybody sitting in the room, <laughs> really. You know, whereas mutual recognition has got a little bit of a. A, a, a kind of resonance of some, of some okay, so it has that, yeah. yeah. People are curious about what it might mean, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Picking up on uh, uh, sort of Carl Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, I was very interested in uh, being introduced to Carl Rogers in an active listening capacity. So um, 
you know, so, somebody somebody says something to me, I listen to it, and then I I, I check. So, is am I right in saying this is what you have just said? Well, and uh, uh, paraphrasing. Right. That's, 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 that, that's something you can do. It's part of but the whole. I mean, Roger and Kenneth is about building a relationship with the client. It's letting them feel, you know, not judged, unjudged, letting them feel a positive a sense of positivity, un unconditional positive regard. That's what they call it. So by building that, so, and that's how they think change will happen, according to that theory, is by giving them those sort of conditions. I mean, so, so I guess we could make a, make a similarity again is that we're asking them what the conditions, setting the conditions to allow someone to self actualize, to self. Um, <coughs> yeah, those are the sort of conditions to kind of allow that person. It's a way of being, it's a way of being I think one of the ways that, well, sorry, one of the reasons why um, the idea sounds more complicated than it need be, yeah, is, is actually is that the society that we live in, um, I feel like a capitalist society, is one where individuals are seen very much as very separate people, yeah, um, as, as liberal thought tends to, to, to emphasize. Um, Whereas the notion, I mean, this means about recognition being constitutive and touching on towards the end. The, the idea that, that that's, um, we, we, we are free because everybody in a mutually reconquered society, everybody is seeing us as free, yeah, are recognizing us to be free. And it means that we um, don't just exist alongside one another as separate, separate individuals. Um, but an awful lot of people in the world think in those terms because I think they, they do want to think of the individual in terms of their private property, you know, possessive individualism. If you, if you, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I mean, the, 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 I, I know that <clears throat> various liberal, someone of, uh, teaching a liberal political theory at Edinburgh University, for example. I mean, <clears throat> if I said something about we, the importance of, of uh, 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 what, uh, what, what do we think about? Someone would say, what? what? We, who is this we? Yeah, where, where is it? And, and the we is usually thought of as existing in relation to some social institution that, um, which in fact inhibits mutual recognition. And that, that we are, well, I don't know, the members of, of the, 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 the Catholic Church or the, 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 the um, or Western uh, white liberals or whoever it might, 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 might kind of be. But the trouble is to, to tighten the word we um, in that in that way undermines the notion of, of, of a mutual recognition as I've been trying to, to explain it. Um, the idea that there can be a we where somebody else comes in the door and says something new. And then there's, they, they were not part of the people who we are not just the people in this room now. It's we plus anybody else who might 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 join us. Um, Mm -hmm. 
It's not so, like, in it, no, I'm not saying it's a people, it's like that what's mentioned on that really probably slight uh, this the talk earlier is is the idea when groups get together, there's all there's always more than some of the parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always more is created from it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I train when I train I train with people who are all of different experiences. So yeah. with many of the trains that were like it's so enriching when you've got people of different rather than the sort of how how in schools of <coughs> age how you uh, it's how people are put together but mm -hmm. and there can be so many, many amazing um, things that can happen that create people mm -hmm. can create in different ways and in that in that situation mm -hmm. it can happen in groups and yeah. yeah, I mean, there are of course political ways of, of, of developing that line of thought. I think it was actually uh, the anarchist Noam Chomsky who uh, he was talking to some group of people in I think in a university and he was talking about we. He was just using the word we from time to time and 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 and, uh, and somebody eventually said right okay um who, who are we? Um and he was able to to come back with by saying oh we well that's it's me and, and it's all the people outside. So there were thousands of people demonstrating. <laughs> I don't know if that, I mean, that's a, a, a sort of development for the ragged university. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I, I like the definition of we are myself and all the people outside. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so, it's one thing that I, I've, I've like being a part of the idea of ragged university because it takes me out of myself. In, it, it takes me to un unanticipatable places. Mm -hmm. It's not the, uh, you know, so it could, could be doing something very different where, okay, I only want people who are, uh, going to talk on geography or exclusive brethren, <laughs> exclusive brethren yes. Uh, you, you've got to be a part of the, the high hygienist club with me. Uh, and if you've not got the special hats, well, this isn't the place. <laughs> but how, how, do, how do I get out of the, because I, I, I realize I'm such a creature of habit. <laughs> you know, and it, it sort of shocked me, and and at a certain point I was atrophying in parts, and I realised I needed people, and I needed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what you 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 talk about mutual recognition, really, it, it's it's is very vivid to me. Yeah, yeah. Before we came here, I was reading an article about the, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the American Association for Civil Liberties. And its um, uh, purpose has been since about the 1920s to protect free speech. And at the moment, it's got itself into um, an un, un, impossible time because um, of the rise of the alt right um, and the um, very toxic political climate that operates in the United States. And to the extent that while the official line is that we should, you know, that the um, things said by um, people of the alt right and fascists should be um, listened to, well, tolerated, that we should not try to censor or stop people saying these things. Um, there are members of the association saying, well, um, you know, basically, you know, we're being asked to um, quietly condone and put up with racism, misogyny, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, where does 
mutual recognition operating a situation like that, where sometimes it can be impossible to have a conversation. Well, I think you, I mean, you, you, you've answered already answered the question. I mean, it, um, there's <laughs> like, I, <laughs> well, yeah. um, the, 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 for example, um, you know, I don't know, should um, there be freedom of speech for, for racists, for instance? I don't, I don't know. But the important thing is that any conversation like that might impinge on, the, 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 on a, an issue that is at stake there, is that somebody else can come in the door. And that somebody else might actually be black. Right, okay, we're, we're, we're racist. And, and we believe in white supremacy. And in the door comes a black guy who's got something to say about it. Right? Okay, well, same thing applies. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, it's when somebody comes in the door and is, 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 is met by a, a row of, of policemen or something like that that the problem arises. If, 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 if everybody can take part in the discussion, it begins to, uh, dare I say, police itself. Right, I mean, the, 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 the thing is, I mean, if, if there's a, a, a color bar halfway down the, the room, and so he's allowed, he's allowed to get in, so you hear what we say, but he's not allowed to be a part of the discussion. Mm -hmm. just, just thinking about you know, the, the, the idea of you know, not, not putting any rules or regulations and into it. But we have to operate from a sense of rules, from a sense of guidelines, from a sense of right and wrong. We all have our own ethical so sitting here, I know that when you speak, I stop, you know, we might not have to declare you know, when we come to Rag University, we don't have to declare what's in and what's out. You know, just certain things when we're sitting around here, we know instinctively we we have cultural similarities. You know, we we all we've all lived in a similar culture, we know how to general discussion or debate like this. So we're all nested in these kind of rules that are yeah, all yeah, part yeah. of the culture, part of families, the school yeah, system, yeah. all of that. So that's all going to be existing. So what happens to that, or where, where does that fit into this theme? Yeah, I don't think it, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, I, I, I'm very well aware that the, the image of an emancipated society a mutually recorded society that I've sketched is, 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 despite my remark about it policing itself, it, 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 um, it's very unlikely just that, that any society, any community or, or society is going to come into being so that sort of fits, that fits the bill for, for kind of everything. And, and it, it's, it's actually difficult to imagine how such a society, if it did exist, um, is going to achieve stability of any sort. I mean, it's going to achieve stability very often by um, bringing something like um, or a constitutional form or, or a state or whatever it might, might be into existence. And, and, and I, I think for, for Hegel, that was a, a, a... I mean, he never answered a question to that. I mean, he did um, try later on in his... his philosophy of right, to, to fall back upon more conservative ways of thinking. But I think in doing that, he actually lost track of what the, his idea of mutual recognition was. Can you see what I mean? It, um, and I, I think very, well, many political revolutions, for instance, have done that, you know, that, that, that uh, by becoming um, nationals, uh, that, 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 um, revolutions that, that, that um, attempt to found or to defend some nation state, for instance, or whatever it might, might, might be. Um, I think what one can do without, without getting into a kind of an ideal world situation is to think, well, what's important is that um, there is a state where um, there are as many as possible um, 
ways in which initiatives that support some notion of mutual recognition is supported by, say, a, a state or a government. I mean, uh, uh, the example that we know, of course, is the, the, the Sotenis Court, <laughs> um, for, for example. Um, that, 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 yeah, I mean, there are other states that clamp down on, on, on that altogether, and that, that is to be regretted and, and, and I think, opposed. So, um, and this clamping down can be a whole number of, of kinds. I mean, I think that the, 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 the market can function like that. It can um, impose a kind of market conformity on, on people without having to, it, it, the, the state doesn't have to stand up and say, oh, well, we're in favor of Stalin or something like, like that. It, it, it's simply that, 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 that the, the, the sameness yeah, involved in, in, in market processes becomes a, a form of, 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 of conformism, um, which undermines <coughs> mutual recognition from a, a different direction. The, the, the where, where you introduced the, the phrase, the end of history, is really interesting because uh, at one point my my head just went oh <laughs> oh I, I I think I get that uh, when you phrased it like that so I'm, am I right in saying the end of like we're having a dialogue a, a conversation and then I go I I bring a cultural presupposition into it <clears> and then go, well, our communication, our interaction has to conform to, to that history, that, that yeah. pattern well, yes. that <clears throat> happened in the past. Yeah, well, you say, uh, are you, you're right. I mean, I think I agree with what you, 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 you say. I, mean, I think every, every, I'm putting it in slightly different terminology, but the same kind of, that, <clears throat> that um, any time when, um, society or history may say to itself, oh, right, we've, we've got into a, a, a post-historical period. We, we're beyond history. There's always a chance that, and it's a very, it's an odds-on chance, that it's going to slip back into some version of, what, if you like, history. Yeah. Um, and, and the, 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 the story of contradictions um, recognition will begin again, you know, and there's, there's, certainly there's no um, innate stability in mutual recognition as I understand it. We don't get to mutual recognition and say, ah, we made it good. <laughs> you know. um, mutual, mutually recognizable. Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, you, but, 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 but we, we don't say oh, we're, we're all stakhanovites or, or we're all um, I don't know, what, IS members or something like that. Like that. We, we, I mean, it, it, it just things just don't work out that, that way. You may say, fortunately, things don't work out that, that way. So. <clears throat> it, it all makes very a lot of sense to the stuff that I've been reading about dehumanization mm -hmm. as well. So when when in the, the psychology of dehumanization, as soon as I start drifting into this realm where I am not recognizing the other people as true and rich and capable as, as I am, uh, and as anybody else is, mm -hmm. things start going awry because I start objectifying other people, and that's inter seeing the people as as more of an object, uh, and think, uh, or as more as a tool. Okay, I'm I'm talking to you because you're rich. Uh, I'm you know, and these instrumental ways of 
of being with people. I'm going, I'm only going to talk with you because, uh, I don't know, you know, Elton John. <laughs> um, it, it's not recognizing, oh, wait a minute. You, you may know Elton John, but who, who gives a hoot about who your friends are? You're the person in front of me. What do you look, what, what do you want to do tonight? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is one, one reason why I can't stand the, a program on television at the moment. Oh, what's it called? Um, question time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 because it, 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 it so, so what's the Dimbleby, whatever it's called? Um, where, I said, right, that's a, a question, right? Uh, ask someone to ask question, right? Okay, you know. And um, um, it's not, in fact, an interaction at all. Um, it uses the kind of the, the mode of interaction. You sort of, yes, let's go, let's go on to so and so, so and so. But, you know, that kind of um, sharing. It, 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 it's, it's top down manipulation, basically. Um, and of course, all the questions are pre submitted. All the questions are pre submitted. Yes. All the people on the panel have seen the question. Yeah. And then to time to come up with an answer. Yeah. Just like the second part of it. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah. But well, it's I think question it's, time, it's, she's it's, got the, the question. It's, it's almost even worse than, than that because, of course, people. Say to themselves things like, I'm interested in politics, mm -hmm. so I'll watch this, this program. And the, at the end of the, their evening, they would think, well, that, that was good. I, I, I you know, really, um, I, I, I was thinking politically in, in, in following this, this, uh, this program. It's, it's not thinking politically. First <laughs> met. Yes. That's probably the only thing you could say for it. Just that it lets you know which parties are more likely to have which point of view. So I think in the run up to an election or something, it's quite a useful program. Um, apart from that, it's just a point of interest as to who it is. So, I mean, oddly enough, I think that, that thinking politically, and that's the way that I would say, and thinking non politically are, are very close together. Can you see what I mean? That, that, I mean, when I say that everything is political, I don't mean that, well, everything reaches up to, to that. I mean, just, just the, the kind of things that people say that count as, 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 as policy. Yeah. You could say it's, 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 it's anti politics if you want. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Would it? I mean, mutual recognition is a better world, a word, I think. Would it? There are these, these, big subjects that, that sort of are the causes of themselves. Mm. Like sort of everything's psychological because we've all got a psychology that we're operating through. Mm. Everything is physical, physics, you know. Um, uh, so is that what, how you're using the, um, Difference between political and non political. I think so, yes, yes, yeah. 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 It certainly is the, it's the opposite of, uh, if you like, party political. Um, which I, I've never really, <clears throat> I, think, I think I find I, I don't understand what people mean when they're trying to expand a party view. I, I always, you, you, your mind just sort of translates. Like, you know, Wait, wait till this person's finished, then we'll get on with talking about something. So, somebody said something that's always stuck with me, and it, it gave me a much healthier understanding of Christianity, actually. Um, so, uh, Malcolm Rue uh, was, was a minister for the deaf, and he, he at one point went, right, I want this sign, signage outside this building to say deaf church, not church for the deaf. And one of the, well, his central point was, well, 
the church is the people inside the building. It's not the building. And that sort of led me to think or realize that by talking to each different individual person, I was getting lots of different versions and, uh, of what Christ, Christianity was to them and yeah. how they were doing. And so I, I moved from this one size fits all megalith to something very organic, and, mm -hmm. uh, which, which demanded that I listened to each person. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the ladies' toilets. The ladies' toilets are just. Yeah. When when's your book coming out? Uh, Adrian and myself are, are, are trying to publish a, a book link version of our, 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 our views. Um, um, there's interest by um, the publisher from Bloomsbury Press, which, well, enough, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a publisher that publishes the Harry Potter books. <laughs> um, but we haven't yet got a, 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 a contract. So I think it's likely that we will get a contract, but um, we haven't got one yet. Um, so we're still at the kind of early maneuvers of, of, of this, this situation. I mean, oh. mm. Mm. I don't know about everybody else. I mean, I've, I'm definitely going to pick up some from Hegel or Mark. Are, are, yeah, are, are there particular translations knowing it's come out of German? Yeah, German. Uh. Um, yes, and then to make life <clears throat> even more difficult, there are two recent um, translations, just very recent translations of the, 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 the um, phenomenology of spirit, um, which cost, if you buy them in a bookshop, Apparently, it costs ninety pounds each. Um, if you if you know how to to fiddle around with uh, um, websites, I think there are Russian websites that are quite good. But you can actually people have downloaded stuff, uh, have uploaded stuff. I think. Um, and and, and you, you can, I mean, I, I know that Adrian, for instance, is really. Good at doing this. Has got these new translations um, on his computer at home. So, um, <clears throat> so you know, I mean, if, if if you like, I could I could go and um, find out from from him more about. But uh, the, the the translation that I work with most, and we'll probably go on using, is uh, by a guy called Miller. Published by um, Oxford University Press. Oh. Um, in, in Marxism, there's no, well, there is a, a, a slight pro complication about the, the whole thing, which is that they. Um, Marx and Engels collected works published from the 1970s onwards, which is a, if you like, a standard translated version of it. Um, are, they, they belong to, to the version of, of rather economistic Marxism, that, that sort of a, um, sort of Marx was a social scientist, he was a scientist. And all this stuff about Hegelian philosophy is, um, Woolly and it's not, you, know, you can't really get any much out of that. So, stuff, if you read Marx in those translations, 
it's a bit more <clears throat> if you like wooden and solid um, a bit more only enough 19th century and, um, and, and, and the extent to which Marx was in, uh, was influenced by Hegel is, is hidden but in the the, 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 the translations. Or of course you could tap it in the German if you feel brave. <laughs> yes, that's uh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I wish I were more than a, I could speak more than bad English. <laughs> the thing is that Translator and ask them for that if you right. were to be bound for by copyright, you could actually go to a trans one of the people and ask them to translate it for you in English. Mm -hmm. Do that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I, I do that as a factor. It wouldn't be a cheap option. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's an yeah. option if you that too. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I do that with, with, with Adrian, my, my friend, because he, <coughs> he lives, lives in, in German, Germany, um, and um, he translates, uh, he, sorry, he teaches in German in various universities in Germany, and, it's, and, and his, his partner is, is a native German speaker, so that I can, I can, I sit in, in Edinburgh and if I, hey, what, are, what about that university? And then, then consult with, with, with Adrian. His German is usually good enough to pick up on on, 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 on issues. Sometimes we, we turn to you know his, his partner, who is not if you like, a philosopher, but um, she um, thinks in German, knows uh, obviously German as we do in, in Scots or whatever, you know. So she, but, um, so yes, if, if, if you if you put two heads together, you can then get the, the, the best of all bits of it. Mm. I wonder is, is it anybody else peckish? Um, I'm I'm pretty pretty peckish. Shall we ad uh, adjourn to the food? And uh, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, should, should I get a yeah. yeah. <laughs>